I will be updating this list. We'll be doing every single time a new DLC character comes out. How disappointing or how exciting are the characters out? Of course, we'll be ranking them from the worst to the best. So those currently 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9 DLC characters in Smash Ultimate currently. There. And yep, there we go. We'll be starting from the worst, least favorite to my favorite. So these are my least favorites. Characters that my the characters that I was really excited for or really good, and now since I got to play Steven Alex, the gameplay will factor in to the rest. So, bottom list is still Min Min. Yep, I'm still salty that they added Min Min to Smash Bros. I'm I still haven't gotten over the fact that they added this character from a series I don't like. Okay, Arms is one of my least favorite Nintendo series of all time, and the fact that they put a character from that game over much better Nintendo series is still a slap in the face or much better characters that were more deserving or more of iconic gaming characters is a big slap to I think everybody's faces that this character sort of been on the base roster but they said nope let's put her as DLC because we want to put arms in the roster somewhere I was like yep this player's patch is not gonna be that great if the first character is literally probably the most disappointing character of all time and yep, I won't be surprised if we get a bonus character as well. But yep, Min Min, bottom of the list. Nine, as at number nine, Min Min is at complete number nine. Yeah, I'm including Piranha Plant in this video as well. So, number eight is still Byworth. I think everybody was angry on Byworth's release. Byworth is at least fun to play as, so that means Byworth goes ahead of Min Min. But I think, yeah, I was angry too. I was like, really, Nintendo? You ended it off with a Fire Emblem character? You had enough this Fighter's Pass? You're not with a high color character that everybody loves, you know, we, this fight, first fight has to work with a lot of great characters. But when you end it off with such a disappointing and character, I was like, really? And again, people said that Byleth is probably one of the worst picks out of all the three houses characters because Byleth is just the brand boy main protagonist. There were so many interesting characters in Fire Emblem Three Houses that they said, okay, you know what? Wake of, wake of the last Fire Emblem game, but at least the last Fire Emblem character, Korn, at least had a... Reason he was like he had a gimmick that he was part dragon, you know, with that course that was interesting and to put in Smash. But Byworth was just just Byworth or C if you play the female Byworth. But yeah, at least though, at least fun to play. At least it's more than just a sword, you know, it's free the free sacred weapons. So, yep, Byworth eighth place, seventh place is still Hero. Hero was just a character that we all know felt like it was just a character that was put to please the Japanese audience. That's what Hero always felt, and Hero was probably the most disappointing character gameplay wise, because his RNZ is probably one of the worst mechanics in any Smash Fighter, Smash character history. And yeah, this is a very, 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 very disappointing character. And now we're getting to the characters that are not disappointing and are actually good. So the rest of these characters are at least exciting or good. So number six. I think has to be Terry. Terry, I think out of the first DLCs is probably my the second of least favorite, actually third of least favorite besides Hero and Byworth, but he's a pretty fun character to play as. He was a pretty surprising character, but he's not as big as the other characters. Number five, I gotta, I, I'm ashamed to say this, is only is Piranha Plant. I love Piranha Plant. He was a very great and unique addition to the Super Smash Bros. series. I love the fact that they added this character. He's a bonus character as well. But I just love the fact that they added this character, you know, rub the salt in the Xeno fans' wounds that they that the plant was added before Xeno. I think this is probably like the most funniest and best Smash Bros. edition ever in the Smash history of characters. Number four, since we don't have we haven't got to play Sephiroth yet, I'll put him at number four. I'll of course update this when we get to actually play as him. But his trailer was pretty cool. It was pretty badass, but we don't get to put since he is, since we is right with Steve, I praise him not that high because his gameplay, we, don't, we didn't get the play as him yet, so he can't be, I'm not going to praise him much higher than that based off his trailer. But it basically is another sword fighter, basically, you know, again, that's a big disappointment. Again, he just beats up people with a sword, so, in the games, but, yep. And then we're going to go to number three, and that is... Joker. Joker. I'm not a big fan of Persona, but Joker is a pretty fun character to play as. It was a pretty surprise. Everything, everybody was surprised, but happy at the same time. Oh, this character that that nobody was expecting was added to Smash Bros. And that's like the beauty of Smash Bros. You get these characters that nobody's expecting. And Joker actually ended up becoming a very good character. So Joker, number three. Number two 
had to be Steve. I was going to put Steve at number one, but Steve was actually quite disappointed as a character in Smash Bros. Okay, the problem is, if you play in a bait, it's kind of like another one of those characters where you can't, well, it, his, his mechanic is very, 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 very difficult. And once the other player is willing to give you time to use his, to get resources, most players are not going to do that. It doesn't say, okay, you can't get your resources, you can't play the game. And that's basically how it is with Steve. He isn't, you know, that broken as he seems. I think Event Hubs plays him a bit too low. Again, Event Hubs treats some characters too harshly over others. Again, Steve kind of plays it in just another mid-tier character. Most, for Event wants people more know about the intricacies of Steve, he'll be much higher on most people's tier lists. And then next is Banzo Kazooie. If you're a fan of Banzo Kazooie or not, except for the people on 4chan, I think everybody was happy except for 4chan because they hate Banzo Kazooie for some reason. They call, they really call Banzo Kazooie fans on 4chan Banzokes. Like, really? You really criticizing a bunch of people who have been wine the childhood character for a long time. But yeah, Banjo Kazooie represents a company that used to work with Nintendo. Well, which is a company that was bought up by Microsoft. But Microsoft said, yep, if you want Banjo Kazooie in the game, you can basically just tell us. It's kind of what the career of Overwatch is now doing. They're saying, if you want Overwatch characters, Nintendo, you're going to easily just form in Smash Bros. as well. But yeah, Banjo Kazooie represents basically the beauty of Smash Bros. characters. The icons of gaming basically be added to Smash Bros. Characters that basically change gaming forever. I've, and that's why all of us are hoping that Crash Bandicoot gets added to Smash Bros. Yes, he may not have that much of a unique moveset, but he's basically another icon like Banzo Kazooie. And so these other characters added to Smash Bros. So yep, there we go. That's all of the Smash Bros. characters updated by hype. You know, rest of the DLC characters. Maybe I should just, I mean, we could do a link of every single Smash Bros. character once all the DLC characters are released from worst to best. Maybe do it on like a TOS type setting. You know, of course, my least favorite characters in Smash Bros. to my favorite. You know, basically, you know, Dale. But yep, that's basically it. Goodbye.